Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to get back into our Let's Play of Distant Worlds 2, where we are playing the Space Gerbils, the Teakins, and uh, we're off to a really <laughs> fascinating start. We kind of hit a perfect storm, where we're playing the weakest military uh, race or civilization in the game and the pirates in our system happen to be the best uh, the Baskarans uh, are you know a militaristic hive mind and uh, they don't like rodents it seems and so they have tried to now uh, storm our home moon twice uh, we have held them off and so far so far so it could work out okay i mean we're not to stable warp drives yet so it's not like we could jump out of our system yet so if this was going to happen i'd rather they put all of their resources into trying to attack our home moon uh than maybe going out and destroying all of our construction ships or our mining stations or otherwise uh i'd rather they kind of put their resources towards attacking something that's a lot more difficult to take uh but it has caused a lot of excitement and it's off to a really interesting game now i did before we started this time if we back up there's tabru it is that is our home system it's the only system we really know about uh, now sometimes with pirates and whatnot you can buy star maps or uh you know maybe you'll just get some information about another star system but we haven't yet and so really this tabru system is the only place where we're operating um, this time I did want to go and look at economics very quickly before we got going, and then we'll also kind of just go down the row here and see if there are other things that we could or should be doing. Uh, so let's look at our empire. It is the TikTok Ascendancy, and we have got 86,000 credits right now, so you can see the credits over here. And then you see cash flow, negative 10,608. Now that is a yearly number. So we're projected to lose 10,608 credits this year in the year 2760. Okay, so it's not like every second that clicks by we're losing that or uh, it's even monthly. I mean, it's a yearly number. Uh, that's your cash flow. Bonus income, plus 40,000. Now we get that for building ships as we've talked about before. There are two different economies in this game, the state economy that we really control directly and the civilian economy that we control indirectly. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a whole civilian economy going on around our empire. Uh, we help facilitate that by finding resources. When we find resources, the civilians get all excited. They maybe want to build mining ships or freighters or things to go out and collect those resources. Well, they need those ships built, and we do that on our spaceport or our home moon, and that can make us income as the state, even though they'll be used for civilian purposes. Colony approval, plus five, uh, that's the average, because we actually do have two colonies now, which is kind of interesting in the fact, you know, here's our main moon, right? We've got 2.3 billion Tekans. Uh, we got a real rat problem there, guys. Uh, 2.3 billion Tekans on our our home moon but we also have this second colony over here where we found some old tekans that were in cryogenesis and they've been awakened uh so that we've got this secondary uh colony over here you know are we going to develop that out or are we going to do anything with it i guess we'll decide as we go on there's not a whole lot that we can do right at the moment to help that colony we're too busy trying to protect uh, our big main colony which is most important of course um uh, Okay, so you see the overall population. There is no war weariness. You don't get war weariness from uh, pirates. Uh, you get that from fighting other empires. And so if we look down here into the TikTok ascendancy and the economy, which is the furthest left button here, you'll see how many credits we have. You'll see the colony tax. Now, uh, you can set different tax rates in your different colonies. Uh, if we wanted to set a 100% tax rate here and a 0% there, we could do that. Now, it might not be smart, but we could do it, certainly. And so, uh, our this is the overall colony tax. Now, remember, these are all annual numbers. So, we're projecting 3.1, okay, or 3,127 for uh, credits for our colony tax, 
currently, because we're in July, it's July 8th, right? Uh, currently, we're at uh, 1,808. In the previous year, 2,586. So you can kind of see, you know, we're projected for more this year. Our colonies are growing uh, and we haven't, you know, we've got the tax rates on automatic right now. I think the AI has it set at like 17% at our main colony. Uh, we'll eventually take that over. Uh, but you, you're, you know, it's just like uh, real life. You know, they're constantly, you're constantly trying to think of, you know, we want a high enough tax rate to generate a lot of revenue, but we don't want it so high that it kills growth. And if you read here, tax rates are set for individual colonies. Uh, tax income is collected from the private income of the colony at a set rate. High tax rates reduce happiness and slow growth. Low tax rates increase happiness and encourage growth. Okay, so why not send them to zero? Well, we need money. <laughs> That's why. Uh, if you look at annual expenses, now down here, these are your big expenses. Ship and base, base maintenance, usually going to be your largest one. And that is really your kind of regular regulator on being able to build way too many ships because you don't want you know, your maintenance to go so high that you have no money for other things. Troop maintenance, well, we've seen our troops down at the home, home moon. Now I call them a regiment. I don't know what their size is. I think it. I think the game calls it a trapper group. Uh, I assume trapper is because we're Tekans, uh, and the group is just what they're calling that ground force. Uh, but it's costing two hundred dollars to maintain. You can see it cost two hundred and one last year, so uh, it hasn't you know increased in any bit. Facility maintenance. You know, depending on where we have facilities, they've got to be upkept. And uh, I'll tell you, that's why this year we're going to have a negative cash flow. I think that's a one-time kind of maintenance cost. Tribute paid, 1500 We are paying off Tekken pirates in our system. There is a second group of pirates, uh, not the Buscarans, that we decided to pay off. Unfortunately, we didn't pay the Buscarans off, but uh, I'm not going to kick myself too hard for that. Uh, I was thinking that, you know, they were the first pirates we encountered. We may encounter other stronger ones. I didn't want to pay off too many pirates. Uh, but in retrospect, it was probably the Biscarans that we needed to pay off. So anyway, you get down here to the bottom and that gives you your cash flow. You can compare it to uh, the previous year. You can see currently in this year what the real number is as opposed to the projected. Bonus income, this is again when we build ships. Private economy, so again, we do not really directly influence that. It's more indirect. We find resources, we build ships, we do stuff you know, like that, but it's the civilians that have to go out and uh, you know, create this economy. But we certainly make money off of it, whether it be uh, taxing the colony itself or building the ships uh, for them to go out. Now, the second thing is funding levels. Again, I've got this on automatic, but we will switch over to manual at some point. Uh, Empire funding levels, you can see automated here, just like in the, well, in the economy is not a good example, but when we go to colony, you'll be, you know, we can set our tax rates where we want them to. I just haven't done that yet. So how does this work? It's like a waterfall. You know, all of the revenue comes in here, amount available, 3127 income, and then it just starts falling down based on the percentages that you have here and the need, right? So reserve 10%. We're saving. We've got a savings account, a piggy bank uh, over here where we're, you know, taking the top 10% off the table to begin with. Then it goes to ship maintenance. Now, Ship maintenance, you know, could be a massive number. It could be a smaller number. You can say, you know, for instance, we could say 50% here. But if we only need 20% of it, it'll just use 20% of it. You know, it does not like it puts it aside or something. It's falling down here. You're just saying the maximum over here with the percentages, okay? Uh, and then you go down, you know, you just keep going down. Troop maintenance, facility maintenance. We saw that over here in the economy. It's the exact same items here. And then when you get uh, past all the maintenance stuff, you have what's called excess, okay? Now we don't have any, you know, because we've got too many expenses uh, in the top line up here. But with any excess, you can apportion that out, whether you want that excess to go to colony growth or to research, right? Because you're not saving any. You already saved it at the top. Uh, just automatically first thing, all right? So once it gets down here, it'll take any money that's left 
uh, available and it'll put it into one of these two things. Now, I would say in the early game, you probably really want this to be 75%, I would say, and 25% for research. You want your colony to really grow fast. Uh, now, I know I've talked a lot about research and how important it is to get things going and researching, and it is certainly, uh, but in the early game, I think having colony growth a little bit higher probably makes sense later on when we're on, you know, some really long research projects we may flip these two um maintenance okay well we talked about maintenance over here and you can see here uh where are all those maintenance costs are going so military wise we have five escorts right now the maintenance is 585 that gives you an idea of how much it costs to maintain a ship. I think it's, what is that, 115 maybe? No, 121. I think it's 121, okay, uh, per escort for maintenance. And then if we get down here, you can see exploration ship, construction ships, and small spaceports, what that costs, okay? Private, uh, we also maintain the private uh, craft and you can see here how much that's costing us we have quite a number of mining stations and they're costing a lot to maintain uh, we have a lot of small freighters they're costing a lot to maintain so just you know something to keep in mind here uh, we it's kind of our government page you can look at what all of our bonuses are if you wanted to compare it to something you could so if we compared it to a republic you'll see the republic over here and you can see what our advantages are what a republic advantage uh, would be um, leaders Queeky Odiki. You can see all of his uh, buffs, bonuses, and penalties. Uh, he is actually quite a good leader. I mean, he's bringing us down on population growth, but everything else. I mean, mining rate plus 20, ship construction pl speed plus 15, and you can see down there in his traits, gener generous, industrialist, labor-oriented, isolationist. He's uh, quite a good leader. Um, then we had our policy settings. We've talked about that many times. We have not found any other empires pirate relations well the boscara raiders are furious with us negative 123 we really couldn't even buy those out now if we wanted to it's gone way beyond that we got a blood feud going on with these raiders now the hidden syndicate uh they are teakin pirates they are okay with us i mean they're neutral uh, of course they are we're paying them 125 credits a month uh no wonder these little guys are happy i really would like to get them on our side at some point if we could and i was going to change this to befriend or ally maybe even close ally let's change that to close ally so we're going to be a uh, close ally strategy means that your empire is more likely to work towards high level treaties defense operations match sharing intelligence sharing you are much less likely to undertake any intelligence missions against them with our spies right now it's going to be hard with our spies against the Bascarans maybe against the Tekans we would have a little bit better luck uh, when I'm talking pirates here uh, but really we want to get them on our side I mean they could help us defeat these Biscaran Raiders eventually and if we kind of you know I don't know uh, subsume them into our empire let's try to be friendly with them uh, independent colonies we haven't found any ambassadors we do have one Edie Nasiki I love the names. Where could we put Edie? Nowhere else but the Teak Home Moon. You can't send an ambassador over to the pirates. We do have two spies. We could try to infiltrate them, uh, but we saw it was like a 4% chance that uh, they could even infiltrate the Biscara. So we're not going to do that. Uh, I've got them on manual now. You know, they're, they're counterintelligence, that's fine. Uh, characters, I'm not going to go through all these again. We've got the Admiral. The only thing I was going to change is this Admiral, Karg Okul, and he is okay. I mean, he, weapon range increase plus five, damage control plus five, targeting plus five, countermeasure, you know, I go on and on. But uh, the basic idea here is, is he's not bad. He's a natural leader. Uh, I like that. But he is now on the Solomon Poster. Solemn Imposter is actually a freighter ship uh, because the ship, uh, the military ship that uh, Cargokel was on got blown. So we're going to transfer him back to the first fleet and we hit transfer here to new location. So he's going to go to the prime demolisher. ETA 27 October of 2760 so as you can see it's going to take about three months to get him over there I like that realistic 
uh, nature. Uh, again, we've got the spies there, nothing more to do. Now, these are our two colonies, and we can look at each colony independently here, right? And so you see here uh, out on Ryoes, well, okay, they're, they are building something down here. It's got a couple of things under construction, but, uh, you know, the tax rate, you can see here, uh, the colony is mostly undeveloped. Well, that's true, but they're a plus 13 overall. They're, they're pretty happy with this. On our home moon, you know, they've got some things that they're happy about. They also do not like the tax rate. Okay. Uh, if we click on Teak Home Moon, we can go down here, and if you just go here, increase tax rate to 18%, decrease it to 16%, that means it's at 17%, right? And so uh, they don't like that 17% rate. It sounds pretty good to me. I live in California, though. Uh, okay, uh, and new colony chances. No, we don't have any colony ships. Planetary facilities. Uh, we do have a terraforming facility because we decided to terraform Ryoes. And so that maintenance cost is uh, 10,000 credits that's really expensive. I, I guess I just didn't realize how expensive that is. And that's why our maintenance cost is actually quite high. And you can see um, damage repair rate, 4% a year, quality improvement rate, 1% uh one percent per year i mean at some point we may want to get rid of this terraforming facility because holy cow is <laughs> is that thing expensive uh, i guess it i mean you know it costs a lot to terraform a planet i i get it uh artifacts okay exploration uh we've got you know five exploration ships here uh this one is out on auto explorer the humble bargain is returning to the space fort port to retrofit uh why is that well that is because i'm going to put him on auto explorer as well that is because we do now have point defense uh, which was the last research we did and so pretty much every state ship is going to want to come in and get that point defense uh because it's going to help our defense hey imagine that uh tebru one this guy's out here he's also on auto explorer the smiling solace uh, you can see, we cannot, you can see the range here. We cannot jump. We can jump just out of our system, but we can't jump to another system, okay? And so we see several things that we have out here in yellow. That means they haven't really been fully explored. Uh, Tebru 2, that's green. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got a few things here I'd like to explore further that just we haven't gotten all the way explored um, when they're in yellow i mean that's based on your sensors now as the game goes on we get better sensors we'll just kind of mistakenly find stuff as we're around our system uh that's the teb rumor i was looking to see if we had any other big bodies out here not really i mean teb Ru 8's out here but that's in green um as for exploration tebru 6 obviously we've explored our tebru 4 we've explored uh we could go over here to tebru 3 that's in green how about snora yeah that place we're gonna send that over there uh that's what he's gonna do uh, we've got these on Auto Explore, Tebru system. I'll also have that go to Auto Explore, actually. Uh, and so that's our exploration. Known ruins. These are, you know, things that give us various bonuses throughout our system here. Uh, because they have various ruins. Uh, and colony development's the big one. If we go back to our home uh, moon... I always forget to say moon. You can see our colony developments at 72%. That includes 41% from our population size. The bigger population you get, the more development you have. 4% from other items because here on our home moon, we've actually got, uh, I think it's caverns or something. Um, I'm trying to see where exactly that would be. Uh, let's, well, we can see it right here. Ancient Teak and World Ship Ruins. Well, there you go. Plus four colony development. Uh, that's on our home plant, our home moon, right? So we get that plus four for our development. Um, 
Then we have, if we look at this a little further, 27% from resources because we have found various luxury goods that add to our colony development. Abandoned ships and bases. Now, I didn't notice this before, but we had found this uh, an abandoned spaceport out here. We definitely want to go repair and investigate that. Always do that with those things. Uh, resources, you can see here. And how does all of this work? Well, for one thing, I just wanted to point out, we have two in red, Kuprika and Kazlon. But just because they're in red doesn't mean we don't have any or something. You can see over here is the stockpile. We actually have a large stockpile of Kazlon. If we didn't have any, that would be a major problem because Kazlon is like gasoline. It's like petrol. Uh, it, it is the... Uh, resource that makes all your fleet go okay so you're saying well that's in red that's bad it is bad but what is it telling us it's saying right now we are mining 18.36 caslons per second the estimated demand for Caslon right now is 36.89 per second so we're only at about half uh mining what the demand is so we've really got to find some more caslon our system is really really light on caslon i mean we've only found it in one location uh that's kind of unusual i mean it's the most abundant resource out there usually speaking uh but they made it a little difficult on us because of course they have uh th this whole game's been difficult so far kuprika uh Mind location zero, known locations one. We do know where there's one, but I think the mining station got blown up or it's being built right now. I just can't remember. Mining locations, you can go see all the different places we're mining. Uh, new mining locations. And if you look down here, you can see we're already building at Tebru 7. We're already building at OH7. What is this red? That is, see, that's Kuprika. It will highlight in red anything that you have a production shortage of. And so we had a production shortage of Kuprika, but we're now building... Um, well, we will be. Let's also say to build all three of these places. Uh, Rylig, we also had a production shortage. Okay, Rylig is a luxury good. It gives us uh, colony development, and so that's great. Uh, out here on this asteroid, this is fantastic. I mean, look at all the resources out here, including Aculon. Uh, mining ships, we've got a lot of them, and, uh, you know... They're civilian for the most part, although we are a mercantile guild government, which is the only time that we could actually manually control these, but I haven't been yet. Uh, fuel tankers, I don't think we have any. No, we don't. Uh, ship construction. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to start spamming out. Now, let's look here. Um Wait time. So we have one construction yard on the Teak Home Moon. But there is now a wait time of 1,742 seconds. Now, that's because we've got a couple of things coming in for repair. At the Teak Home Moon, that's what this always shows you. What is the wait time uh, currently? So here, we've got a wait time of 1,369, a build speed of 2.6 per second. Now, that kind of goes into the size of the vessel. And so if a, a vessel, I believe, has like a 375 size um, you know, the build speed is 2.6 of that per second. And uh, same with the, re uh, the repair speed. Look at this, though. At Ryoese, at this construction yard, we can really crank out stuff. And I think that's what we're going to do because I am going to start spamming out S. Well, doesn't look like we can build any of this stuff. That's kind of what I w was thinking uh, disabled, disabled, disabled. Yeah, we can't build here. Well, no wonder there's not a wait time, for goodness sakes. Let's instead go to our Teak Home Moon. You can see we could build, right now, these are the four ships we could build. The mining ship, the escort, the construction ship, and the exploration ship. I am going to start building escorts like crazy. I'm tired of these pirates. I'm going to, we've got a lot of credits, right? So I'm going to build six more there, but because of that, we're going to have to do something. Oh, I will point out now that we're here at the Teak Home Moon, you can always come here and see what the bonuses are here at this location. So it's the overall bonuses at just this location um, and why you're getting them. Okay, why you're getting them. Uh, plus 35 colony development. 
which is plus 4% from the ancient Tikit and Worldship ruins and plus 31% from resources. So you can always see that, right? Including any characters you have on the world and whatever. Then you can see the empire-wide bonuses here. So this is every bonus we're getting in the game. You can see our mining rate is crazy good because we've, we're the Teak. Uh, and we've got Queeky Odiki. Uh, and Queeky is just an amazing miner. I mean, I... He loves Loretta Lynn. He's a coal miner's daughter out here. Uh, plus 10 damage control, plus 25% ship construction. That's excellent. And a lot of that's from Queeky as well. So we've got ourselves a good leader there. These are what This is what we have down on the ground, right? The 12th Trapper Group. That's what I was talking about down on the planet. Uh, and then we've got along here. These are all the different characters that are on the moon currently. There's our general, Dexy Lawson. I want to say lose it. Dexy lose it. Uh, and we can know more about Dexy here. Dexy, uh, troop maintenance savings plus three. Mm, okay. He's a good ground logistician. Poor recruiter. He's a drunk. <laughs> I'd love to see this little guy get drunk and see what happened. But he is a good tactician. So that gives us a plus three increase to all existing skills. Okay, dude. Uh <laughs> I don't know. That kind of cracks me up that he's a drunk. Uh, righty then. Uh, where was I? Uh, we were a long ways along here. Uh, the mining, right? And so now I've set it up to go build uh, mining there, mining stations. I'm building a lot of escorts, but that's going to take us to the military and kind of what's important next. Uh, idle space. Spaceport are oh these are the construction ships right um, I've got this on auto um, I think I want this to be on auto I want to have one that can just go uh, for instance that spaceport that was abandoned uh, he'll go probably that's going to be high high uh, priority although now I'm thinking hmm hmm let's go back to that for a second. Where was that? Uh, let's go find it. Where is it? It is, oh, it's all the way right down in here. Okay. So let's keep zoom. There it is, the spaceport. I do have a mining station out here, and that is Tebru 1. All right, let's go back to the construction ships. We'll go to the cautious bootlegger, and we're going to send him out there, move to that spaceport. And when he gets there, he'll automatically, you know, start repairing it or do what he can with it. Uh, we've got build a mining station at OH7, build a mining station at Tebru 7, and then this has no mission right now, but I just, you know, I just told it to go to these new mining locations. So it'll go off to one of those, that's fine. The construction ships, again, we talked about that. Build order, research. Uh, hey, right now, we're not too far away from research labs, but let's go to military because this is really gonna be important. So we're now building a bunch of escorts and I hate doing this. It would have been cheaper to just buy the pirates off, but now we're gonna have to try to overwhelm them. I mean, we can't not take, allow them to raid our home moon it's just gonna set us back way too much uh but one of the things i want to do here so these are all of our military ships right i've got them all on manual okay um i i'm gonna want to put all of these in first fleet but before we do that let's actually go to first fleet okay so we go to first fleet uh looks like prime demolisher is not in the worst shape he's prime demolisher is okay uh, the angry protector. Oh, he, he's okay as well. So we have two escorts that are actually active. Now we have a few or a couple anyway, that are dead in the water. They're completely disabled, but we are in first fleet. Okay. Um, now what? Well, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> let's go to first fleet. As we go down here, we could have them refuel and repair um at the tebru 4 mining station interesting uh so it's they don't even think you know the game doesn't even think it's safe to come back to our spaceport because there's pirates everywhere uh we could also top up the fleet with ships what would that mean well i'll show you here in a minute actually army template well we will get into that at some point um uh, major colony defense army 
Well, maybe we'll get into it now, but that's not what the, any of this is. Uh, it's for ships. This is the first fleet. And what do we want? Okay, right now you see fleet template is an attack fleet. What is that? Well, let's go up here to fleet templates and you see attack fleet and let's hit edit just to show it for a minute. Right now, the template for an attack fleet would be six frigates, five destroyers, two cruisers, one battleship, one carrier, and two fuel tankers. Well, we don't even have the vast majority of these ships. The only thing we have right now are escorts, and that's not, you know, an escort's not even supposed to be in an attack fleet. So let's get out of that, and let's copy... Uh, well, let's see what's in a defense fleet, right? So let's, uh, I'll just click edit, not that we're going to edit it, but I'm just curious what's in here. Three destroyers, one cruiser, three frigates. Well, we can't even build those yet. We don't have the components for it uh, to build them yet. We've got all escorts, which is not great, right? But this definitely is a def defense fleet. So let's copy as new, and it's now new defend fleet. That's fine by me. Uh, fleet roll defend. Engagement range. I want this to be uh, same location, same system. Let's do same system. Okay, because we're only in our system now anyway. Fleet should retreat when enemy strength is 50% or greater. Uh, attack stance. Neutral. Evade. Cautious. We don't really want to attack that much, really. Uh, fleet ship role reassignment. Ships reassign roles within the fleet as needed. That's fine. Uh, tactics. Use flip fleet or ship. Use ship tactics. No, we wanted to use fleet tactics because I'm only putting in one set of orders, guys. We're not going through every one of these ships. So we want it to be the fleet follows all the same tactics. Um, engagement range. We already talked about that. Attack stance when against weaker targets. Well, when they're weaker, we'll go aggressive. Attack stance when they're stronger, we want to be cautious. Retreat when 20% of non-defense, that's fine. Invade colonies, never. I mean, these guys are never going to do that. And now we're going to take out the destroyers because we don't have any of those anyway. or And frigates. And we can't go less than one ship. So we're going to have to put one escort in before we can go to zero there. And then we're just going to go up. And uh, for escorts, I'm going to put it as 10. Once we get more than 10, uh, maybe... Is that true? Well, once we get more than 10, maybe we'll build a second fleet or something. We've only got the one admiral. And I want to get the bonuses. So maybe I actually... Let's make it 12. You may be saying, sure, uh, okay, what does all of this mean? Well, now, new defend fleet. This is how much it would cost to build that, 36,414. Maintenance, 1631. Ship count, 12. Okay, uh, now we could just hit plus here and form a new fleet, new defend fleet from existing ships. Or we could build new defend fleet at uh, so-and-so, but we're not going to do either of the two. We are going to click out of here, and when we go back down to fleet template, it's not going to show yet. It's not going to show yet. Let's go back up here and open this. New defend fleet. Get out of here. Now come down here. Gosh darn it, where is it? Should be showing. Let's get off of this screen and come back. Uh, when I was testing this earlier, I had this same problem. It should now pop up. Fleet template. There it is. New defend fleet. All right. And so now we've given a template of what we want the first fleet to be. You can see the prime demolisher is our flagship. No mission. Not, you know, not yet. Uh, fuel level 263 to fill. We could have it, you know, go over to Tebru 4 and refuel potentially. Top up fleet with ships. Yes. So we want it to build all the way until we have 12 ships. Now, we had already ordered five. Now it's ordering another five, right? Because we only had two that were active. We are going to start just spamming ships here. Okay, uh, fleet roll manual. Actually, I want it to be to defend. Defend targets within 50% fuel range of the teak home moon spaceport that's fine set tactics 50 percent of fuel range for engagement okay attack stance cautious formation normal ships uh, retain current range that's fine Sh use ship no use fleet tactics uh now i had already changed some of these and i've i've been curious why this is not changing down here but i found that you got to go change it down here um 
Attack stance, weaker targets, aggressive. Attack stance, uh, stronger targets, cautious. Uh, 20%, okay, we already agreed to that. When clear, nope, never for invade colonies. Okay, and now that's the tactics for the first fleet. Uh, you can see it up here on defend. It's got seven escorts total, or at least that's what's ordered. Uh, but we have a few other that, others that we're building that we'll also put in the first fleet. Top up fleet with ships. I already clicked that. Okay, it's all good. That's fine. Uh, I think for military, that's okay. We could go down here to our troops, uh, 12th trapper group, um, ungarrison troops. Nope. We don't want to do that. Keep them in the garrison. We need all the help we can get. We could also try to recruit more troops. Um, you know what? I haven't done that on here yet, but I'm afraid... Ungarrisoned at colonies, infantry, all troops. Well, let's go look for it. Enemy targets, new. Enemy targets, none. Dangerous locations, we're not showing any. Defensive bases, admirals and generals, we've talked about. Troops, uh, army templates, border, colony defense. Okay, invasion army, major colony defense army. All right, let's edit that and see what we got here. 25% infantry armored planetary defense. Well, we don't even have any of this stuff. There's even Titans in this game, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, we don't even have any of that stuff yet. So that's not going to do us any good. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, set colony automation, build new shipper base. We don't have facilities. Manage troops. There we go. Recruit a trapper group for 2,000 credits. Well, let's do one. Let's do two. Uh, let's, you know, get the 49th and 48th trapper groups out here. Uh, maybe even a fourth one. Let's do a fourth one. We may as well make sure our colony is strong. Uh, and so now we've done that with troops. We can't really do much with the template uh, because... Ultimately, we just don't have a lot of stuff. We only have infantry as of right now. Let's play the game. Uh, we just spent a lot of money, and our ship upkeep is going to be quite high, but I'm almost, I'm almost counting on some of those escorts getting destroyed. Now, as you can see, we've got all of these ships under construction. They will show up out here in and around our moon. Uh, the escort, these guys... Why are they not? I really am curious why they're not coming back here. Uh, you can see in the queue, the civilians want a lot of small freighters too. So we're building these escorts right now, um, a mining ship, but the civilians are really ordering a lot of ships. Now we did uh, put ourselves in priority though uh, first, right? Oh, we got pirates. There's the deadly defiance as we have two escorts, the Tebru invader and the ruinous action. They're going to go out here and try to scrap with it. And you can see here we're under attack. Well, OK, I mean, we really can't stand up to him right now. I mean, we just don't have it. Do you see that? That was one of our torpedoes that was fired. His. Um, his defense, though, is able to knock that out. He's just got a stronger vessel here than we do. And we're getting beaten up. Uh, you can see the hole is almost gone on this now. He's locked onto us. He's about to blow us up. But now we got more escorts coming because we're going to be building a lot of these suckers and trying our damnedest best to just overwhelm him at some point. Uh, that's all we can really hope to do. We don't have as good as ships, certainly. Uh, you can see uh, I've got this uh, on his ship, trying to see if we're even knocking down his shields. We have knocked down his shields a little bit, uh, but as long as we only have two escorts on him here, it's not going to be enough. We need to swarm him. We need like five or six where he just can't, and he'll probably warp out at that point. Oh, we hit him kind of hard there. Unfortunately, again, these guys just, uh, you know, his shields are almost gone, and now he's up close with this guy. Uh, here comes another escort, though, and we're just going to keep trying to spam him. I think the other escort just took off to try to repair. Uh, well, we're hitting him here or there. Oh, it looks like his shields are almost gone. Does he have any more ships out here? 
Yes, the Phantom of Mustafar. And we've got a new escort completed. So again, just spamming him. Uh, and, you know, I hate to do that. I mean, I would have rather paid him off, but I just don't think we have any chance. He's trying to jump now. Uh, I think he's trying to jump. Yeah, it says jumping. So you can see his shields are gone now, and so he jumps out. And now we're going to have to go try to find the other uh, First Fleet. You're in First Fleet. Okay, let's have you go refuel, refuel and repair uh under construction let's pause for just one second let's go up to our military ships uh so we've got the trapper groups building here i love it military ships uh demolisher of tabru and you got to go here make sure they're in the first fleet now it should be filling up automatically though um okay we want to add them to the first fleet so we just hit right there you can see it also right up here right first fleet first fleet ruinous action uh, we want that to be added to the first fleet. And I think once we get all of these guys built, uh, we'll put him in the first fleet when he rolls off, first fleet. When all of this builds up, I think we should have enough to hold him off. Unfortunately, it's just going to cost us a, a fortune. Uh, no irony or pun intended there. Unfortunately, a fortune. Um, auto, let's put all you guys to manual. But you can see I've got their tactics on defense, so they'll go defend anyway um, within the same system. Okay, I mean, we got to pick up whole superstructure. Where are we doing that? Uh, where are you going? Let's see where his... Uh, it's one of our ships that got blown up. He's out here to pick up the whole superstructure. Okay, and you can also see this is where Admiral Karg Okul, he's on the flagship, the Prime Demolisher. I just like that name. Uh, if we will go to the first fleet, you can see Prime Demolisher. So he's on the flagship, and we can see our different escorts here. All right, let's back up. Uh, you know, one little mistake like that can really cause you problems, as you have seen. Uh, you know, we've got all sorts of problems out here, but we're dealing with it. Um, out by the spaceport, do we have, yep, uh, the cautious bootlegger came out here. Oh, he's been disabled. Interesting. Um, he got, he must have gotten attacked. Retro, he got attacked before. Before, there's the mining that's right he got attacked before i think we need to go send something to repair him hmm as you can see let's put him on fully automate uh but he can't move he's been disabled uh they took out his shields you know, we can't retrofit, we can't stop, I mean, there's nothing to do with him, really, uh, until we could get something to repair him. So we have a mining station over here at OH7, we have this one uh, here at Tabru 1. Okay, well, good to know, good to know. Uh, Uh-oh, looks like we're under attack. Where is that? Uh, yes, indeed, and it looks like we're now warping back, although we didn't get a message that we were. I just saw that on the big overall map. That's our mining station at Tebru 4. Here's our home moon. Oh, yeah, here come the pirates, guys. Uh, the Conquest of Mustafar, the Majestic Rampage. And you can see all of our escorts are moving towards them uh, because we do have the first fleet on defend. So hopefully we can hold this off. You can see our uh, this guy's almost already done for. Uh, too bad. We got more on the way. This is the angry protector. We just don't have enough strength here to hold him off, quite frankly. And I think, so we're, we're already getting things destroyed. And because of that, you can see, I mean, we just haven't built some of these other escorts back here. Uh, new escort completed. Make sure he's in the first fleet. Yeah, he comes out from the spaceport. And, you know, they're all going to try to jump over here and help against these pirates. I, I, Again, I think it's the only thing we could do. Now the angry protector is disabled. He can't move. Uh, that's not good. Shield's going down here. Are we even putting a dent in these guys? Well, a little bit. Uh, that guy there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got, oh, okay, we just had something absolutely get 
<laughs> wrecked. Let's go back to military, first fleet. Uh, no missing ship rolls. So we're continuing to build to top up that fleet. So we're just going to keep building escorts and we're going to try to keep him off the home moon. And one of these times, oh boy, he's going to blow up the angry protector too. Uh, he's had enough of that. Well, it makes our ship maintenance go down when they get destroyed. It it wastes credits, but it makes that go down. I'm going to um, pause there for a second because let's go back here. We're trying to close ally these guys. Let's speak with them. Offer treaty. Cancel protection agreement. No, never mind. Negotiated deal. Non-aggression. Military refueling. Advanced Diplomacy. Um, these are all the different things we can do uh, diplomatically. What I'd like to do is eventually offer them a deal, a protection type deal. You get attacked, we'll help you. Uh, we get attacked, you help us. Because we need help. We need help. I mean... This is actually down to negative 75. I could almost pay them off. Now we see their known military strength is 364. Can we get there? Well, we're at 190. Not terrible. I, You know, I mean, I've seen worse. Uh, once we get up to 15, because each one of these ships is 39, uh, we actually should have quite a bit more strength. But he's got to give us enough time uh, <laughs> to do that. And, uh, okay, well, it's... A, it's were Tekans, I thought, well, I don't know how many military scraps we'll even get in. Will this be boring? This has been anything but boring, certainly. Uh, the colonies, okay, our characters. Oh, pause. Okay, research labs completed. That's great. New escort. We're just going to keep pumping these out till we can get rid of these pirates. I, I almost don't care how much it costs to do. We've got to get rid of them. Um, so let's get rid of new escort dismiss let's go to research labs uh and we'll do that up here and as you can see so now we've got research labs that's important and we'll go talk about this in a second but now we're going to do stable warp fields that would allow us to warp out of our own system to another system uh it increases it by 40 times the distance you can jump i mean that's huge right uh we're going to do that before armor plating although you can say the way we're going with these pirates maybe we need the armor plating after that, what do they want us to do? Well, they want us to go after system patrol starships. That essentially is, uh, you know, gives you frigate. Okay, so these frigates are better defensively. You can load a lot more on them. They're not particularly fast or they're not good for attacking, but uh, they are what they are, system patrol. Uh, and so given what we're going through right now, that I think is a pretty good idea uh, to do later, but we'll come back and look at that because, man, I hate wasting money on a system patrol. We want to get out amongst stars and trade, uh, not worry about our own home system. But as you can see, uh, that's not always uh, possible. Okay, stable warp fields. We want to crash research this. It's going to cost 16,000 credits, uh, but it speeds it up in half. And so it was going to take eight years. Now it's going to take four years. And so that's good. We'll do that. Uh, what else would be interesting to us? The next one they have is accurate point defense. So we've already got early beam weapons. This accurate point defense, another defensive thing, which I think is really what we're going to go down. We're not going to really try to research a lot of offensive weapons, like heavy ion weapons. I mean, I'm sure eventually we'll get to them, but we're going to try to be defensive, and that's about it. Uh, there are also tractor beams in this game, which is a lot of fun. Uh, shock forces, robotic troops. I mean... This game's incredible once you start going down this tree. Uh, we already have starfighters, but uh, we don't even have starship maneuvering yet. So, okay. Uh, armor plating we have up next. So it really is all defensive. I guess maybe I like that, although we, you know, I kind of want to do more research stuff. Uh, speaking of research, okay, we're still on pause. Speaking of research, let's talk about research labs. And so if we go here... New research locations. These are the places we could build research labs. And you may say, well, why can't I build a research lab anywhere? Well, 
Uh, you can't. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, you can't. You can only do it where you have a bonus for research. Okay, so Tebru two, Tebru four, Tebru seven. Um, and research labs are quite expensive, both for building them and maintaining them. So what are we working on right now or thinking about? Well, shields research we need. Uh, you can see here our last sighting of this location. Well, this is the uh, planet we're operating around, Tebru 4. It's dangerous, right? Tebru 2, uh, engine research. So we get this bonus at that research lab. We also get whatever bonuses that our scientists have. And so we have Ori or Oro Hanari is a scientist, uh, construction, high tech, and shields. So if we do this plus three shields, plus the plus three shields from the location, we can end up with, uh, you know, a decent amount of bonus there. Um, and that is the only scientist we have. Now, once we do stable warp fields, which is kind of another major one, I think we'll get another scientist after that. Um, but as it is, let's go back to research location. So Tebru 7, build a research station at Tebru 7 for 6,606 credits. Yes. Okay. And now our construction ship, uh, a construction ship will automatically go out and do that. Um, seven for research stations, right? Uh, maximum potential uh, research, 13 from colony, 13 from research stations. All right. Well, we, you know, the research station is, is basically uh, our home moon at this point. Uh, once we get more of these built, uh, you know what this will this will go up but you always want your actual to be close to your maximum and you may say why is your actual not there yet well our scientist doesn't have anything to do because we haven't built an actual physical research lab yet and so that's what we'll be looking to do we'll do that out of tebru 7 listen the pirates love to go after that kind of stuff and so uh, hopefully we can take out some of these pirates first okay we're still battling the pirates here but he actually warped out a uh, prime demolisher Oh, you can see all of your re potential research bonuses there, too, and your scientists. Just don't forget that. Research stations, we already have. The Teak Home Moon gives us a plus six. That's where it was getting that from. Plus four, plus eight. I mean, look, we're going to want to build these research labs here as soon as we can. They're, it's super important. Oh, boy, where are we getting attacked now? Well, it's still around our home moon. Um... Uh... But he jumped out there, too. All right, let's go to our military ships. And let's see, leave construction yards. So we have yet another one coming. Refuel at Tebru 4. Okay. Uh, auto guard. Let's do auto patrol. Auto patrol. Auto patrol. Now, a lot... It's going to override what our, you know, our fleet tactics are going to override. Uh, so we're really arguably already doing this. Okay, and there's yet another one. Okay, not auto raid. Auto patrol. Auto patrol. Okay, and this one is disabled though. So any of these that are disabled... Uh, and maybe I should just automate the whole damn fleet. Uh, but I, I kind of have. It's on defend. I actually think we have, you know, we're getting very close now to having just as much uh, strength as the pirates. And so, um, you know, hopefully we can finally back these guys off. I just didn't want them to land on our moon again. Oh, and uh, over here at Ryoese, we've got stuff going on as well. That's our other colony. You can see that... Um, they want us to build, you know, stuff over here, but we just haven't built up this colony enough yet. Uh, we've got a transport coming in there, under construction there. That's all coming out of the colony at Ryoese, but we don't have very many teaks there. Oh, okay. We're under attack again. You can see, let's pause this. I want to make sure... Dismiss. I want to make sure all of our escorts are going over to defend this. And so attack Majestic Rampage. Yep, you can see there's the line coming over from the overwhelming liberty. Wow, the overwhelming liberty. All of these guys, actually, I'm going to put on fully automate. 
uh, but I've already given it the tactics. Uh, roll within fleet attack, same system, aggressive neutral, 20% immediately. Nope, never. Well, maybe I do want these under... Um, oh, this because this is a new one that rolled out. The, t the fleet tactics would overwhelm this. So let's look at the fleet tactics. 50% cautious normal ships retain enemy strength. Use fleet tactics instead of the individual ship. Same system, aggression's cost. Okay, so that's all good. And we will be using those fleet tactics. But I think for the individual ships, I'm going to go out here and just put them on fully automate for right now anyway. And hopefully as they come out of the spaceport and are built, they will just immediately come over here and will eventually get rid of these pirates because they are causing a, me a major headache. Fully automate. Uh, fully automate. Well, if you've been watching these, I think you've learned a lot about this game. Hell, I'm learning a lot from this game and I played a lot of the first game. Uh, fully automate. Sorry. I, there probably should be a way that everything... Uh, here you could just turn to fully automate, although really you already have because the fleet, uh, you know, by setting the tactic that the fleet overrides, uh, really they are all on automate anyway. Okay, let's watch this pirate and let's see if he can, we can swarm this guy. They should be coming over soon, our other escorts. Here they come. I can see them coming. Oh, look at that. All right, buddy. You want to play? Let's play. You want to dance? Let's dance. We got another disabled ship here. He's about to blow it sky high, baby. You can see, I mean, we're still at 45,000 credits, even though we are just cranking out escorts all the time. Uh, we're also spending on doing other things. He's actually uh, taken off here a little bit. Uh, he did blow up this ship. Oh, these were guys that were supposed to be under construction. So he's just running around like blowing up things that are supposed to. And you can see the components. And now he's doing another one. Uh, guys, defend. Defend. Pause. Holy crap. Biscara Raiders offer us protection. <laughs> Show me. Show me uh, 125 credits a month. I think that's going to be cheaper uh, than what we're doing. Okay, Raiders, uh, finally. Well, that gave us a lot of great action, though, did it not? But we're finally going to pay them 125 credits a month to leave us alone. So that's now 250 credits a month we're spending. Uh, I'm not sure if we want to ter terraform this other potential colony. I, I think maybe we want to kind of leave it alone. It's not the best colony in the world anyway uh, here at Ryoe's, although we've got it up to 48% now. Um, interesting. But I think we're going to do that next time. Hey, we did it. We did it. We got the Buscarans. Uh, <laughs> they're at least not going to attack us now. Uh, probably should have done that a long time ago, but we'll finally be able to build up a halfway decent fleet now. Uh, we've got things, you know, that are warping out all over the place, whether they're exploring, they're mining. Uh, we'll go and look at more of the resources we have the different things we found, our different mining stations, because finally we maybe have put the pirate uh, threat to uh, ease uh, simply by buying them off. Uh, maybe that's uh, always the best course when you're playing the Tekans. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you're learning something. Like I said, I know I am, uh, so have a good one. Talk to you next time.